What's up you guys? You got Shempy and I'm bringing you the final installment in this Road to Glory series. Now being the end of the year we had to see who was going to win the Heisman. It came so close last year but wasn't able to capitalize. And this year I do come away with it. And uh, Alabama's halfback actually came in second. And this is going to be the same Alabama team that I should see in the national championship this year. So it should be a really tight matchup against really two elite players and a couple of pretty good offenses I'd have to imagine. And here are my stats on the year. 4,600 passing yards, 56 passing touchdowns, and still able to keep up the rushing numbers um, with over 1,800 rushing yards and a staggering 30 rushing touchdowns. I have to admit, I took over most of the load this year, uh, not leaving much room for Michael James. As you can see, I'm racking up all the rewards, but it's time to focus on the big game, a junior national championship. I've already told the presses that I'm going pro. Let my school know what the deal was after winning at least one national championship, potentially another after this game and the Heisman. I don't see much reason to stay in college. So let's get started with this Alabama team who I'm going to have to admit, I had a lot of trouble with early on. Their defense was just incredible, and you'll see later on some of the rundowns that these players get. They all have amazing speed, and they hit hard. I can't hang on to the football. And there's my first turn turnover of the game early on. Already a two-possession two game, and not liking where this is headed. And they continue to get pressure on me the entire game, and forcing me to make a lot of quick passes, so I definitely had to adjust my play style. And you'll see throughout this game, I'm making a lot of quick passes. I'm trying to be a little more uh, conservative on the run, running out of bounds and sliding down so I don't take another big hit. But I still have to find a way to get my offense going. And this is when I start running a lot of quick passes, a lot of out routes. You're going to see a ton of those because this defense is just too fast and they get to me. So I can't wait for my receivers to run their routes and get downfield. A lot of the time I have to throw the pass right away and the Michael James is one of the guys I'm trying to get the ball to because I have to check down a lot with these uh, incoming pass rushers. Uh, but I gotta admit this defensive line is not as well coached as I would have expected. They're jumping off sides a lot, giving me some free plays and I gotta execute when they give me those. So I keep running these quick routes. And sometimes they get open, and sometimes they just don't work out as well. So I end up taking this one. As you see, I go down for the slide there. want to hang on to the ball a little bit better. And here, the offensive line does its job reasonably well, holding that D-line. And I find a man streaking across the middle. He gets down to about the five-yard line, where I'm going to take over and try to do something in the red zone here. And with a stout defense like this, it's not going to be easy. So you can see there's two guys shadowing me. So I just reverse the side of the field. I uh, have another couple of guys waiting for me, but I find my way just enough to get into the end zone. One of my favorite things to watch in college football is when an amazing athlete can just make an entire defense look stupid by reversing the field. I'm glad I finally got to that point, but as you can see here, getting LaMichael James involved a little bit, he's also a senior, so i got to give him a little bit of love. I don't know what happened on this play, but after bumping the receiver, I guess they just got too worried about me on the run, and they leave him wide open where all he has to do is outrun a couple of short cornerbacks and his long strides lead the way and he scores a touchdown, giving me that long touchdown pass which really wasn't too difficult, especially considering how good this defense has been all game. And Late in the first half we have a chance to get another score when Michael James makes a move and finds his way out of bounds, one of the smartest plays I've seen him run all year, actually breaks a tackle and does everything he needs to and trying to run my sideline routes and hopefully get something to break off and go downfield, but this is one of those rundown plays I was talking about. I'm running full speed backwards, away from a player, a defensive lineman at that, and he is able to catch me, and I just took my team out of field goal range, and I'm not feeling too good about that, trying to run a screen, not able to set it up. Luckily, we do get the ball at half, so I'm able to hopefully make amends in a game that's really become pretty close. But this D is not slowing down, and once again they're bringing a blitz. A couple of linebackers which free up the defensive ends, but I find LaMichael who gets open in space and isn't able to break that first tackle, but still gets 9 yards, which is great, exactly what you want out of a first down. It makes this next play really easy. Find my man downfield, simply outruns that first tackle, and then gets run out of bounds. But back inside the red zone, I gotta go to work. 
My man runs what looks like it's going to be another little out route, but stops the route short. I find him, he almost gets in the end zone. But I'm going to have to let Michael James take it in himself. Really well blocked. Fullback blocked out the linebacker really nicely. But we've got an 8 point lead. But this Bama D is not going to take that. It is still playing hard. Even though it had a couple of breakdowns in coverage, these linebackers in this defensive line are still making really big plays. Michael James not able to break some of these tackles out of the backfield. And we face a third and six, which is definitely a doable play. I was trying to draw him off sides and make it a third and one. But I thought I had the outside running lane there, but it closed down in a hurry, and I'm running around. My man comes off of his route, runs across the middle, and I find him pretty well covered, but he makes the catch and makes the play. Well, Michael James continuing to get outside in space and giving me these great checkdown routes, which have become so important because it seems like I'm always under pressure, just like this. Um, had a man wide open and square early on if I'd thrown it sooner. Actually, his own man didn't even make the interception. It was uh, the other crossing route, so probably should have thrown that earlier so they wouldn't have crossed. And Bama capitalizes with a score, but isn't able to tie it up with a two-point conversion. That fails, so now we have the ball. Trying to run the clock out, it's the fourth quarter, and now it's time to make some clutch plays show that I really did deserve the Heisman and make up for those bonehead plays I had earlier. Number 85 continuing to come up big. Really one of the receivers I haven't utilized too much in the previous years, but he's been doing really well so far this year. And when Michael James breaks two tackles, still gets caught for a loss of two, and my receiver beats the man off the line here. Isn't able to get downfield, but gotta love those plays because it really only takes one broken tackle, and that could be a touchdown. And here I thought I had another score, but that defensive secondary closed quickly, and we're still on the one yard line, and I've got to make a play. Thought I might have had an outside running lane here, but that linebacker played it really pretty well. Get run out of bounds on about the half yard line now. So we're running an option, and almost don't get it again, but able to spin off that linebacker and just barely get into the end zone. And I have to admit, even though we're putting up some decent numbers for the offense, uh, this is one of the best defenses I've played so far in my road to glory. And really a pretty good game overall. Bama answers with another touchdown. I'm still throwing, but I think i got to move away from these out routes because they're running out of bounds too much. i got to run this clock out. So I move to an option play, get the first down, make them use one of their timeouts. But we've got a minute 43 left. They've got a couple of timeouts, but thrown to the wide side of the field. The number 15 has been relatively quiet this entire year. It makes a great play, and one of the guys I've really come to count on, even if I face a third and long, you got to have one of those guys that can just catch the ball if you throw it to him. And there, I get an easy first down. Uh, two plays, two offside calls, and Spam D is making it pretty easy for me to run out this clock. By now they've used up all of their timeouts and we're still running this offense. You know I'm not satisfied winning by two in the national championship. So I find my man way downfield and he makes a big catch in space. But now with 38 seconds left I could choose to kneel it out or run it out. But I'm just not satisfied with that. I shake off a tackler, go for the score, don't quite make it in. I'm on the one yard line. But all it takes here in a soft zone coverage with the blitz is a little out route. The one that's been working the entire game, basically the one that made my completion percentage so high in this game and throughout the entire season. And that is the national championship game and the final game of Shane Falco's college career. And just so you guys know, I do anticipate uploading him to Madden, so look forward to that video soon. Looking for a great team to get drafted by. Unfortunately, I can't just pick and choose who's going to draft me and... I can only hope it's going to be a great team with a lot of pieces in place on that offense. So hopefully I can do some damage in my rookie year. But look forward to some of those Madden videos and let me know what team you want me to go to even though I can't choose. Now enjoy this final little clip. Finally at the end of the road to glory. Let's take a look back at the career of our favorite student athlete. 
an era has come to an end. Expectations were high when he came to campus as a heralded quarterback recruit four years ago. He chose wisely, ending his career on a team that called themselves champions on numerous occasions. Three conference titles is impressive, but two national titles is simply outstanding. He also racked up an impressive number of individual awards. One Heisman, two Davy O'Brien trophies, and two Maxwells. Time to find out what Kirk Herbstreet thinks of this young man's career. When it comes to ranking the all-time signal callers for this program, he may not be the best of all time, but he's at least in the discussion. He isn't just one of the best in school history. I'm talking all the college football. He had all the physical tools and the mental toughness to go with him. I loved watching this guy play. I expect some big things from him on Sundays starting next year. I'm hard-pressed to see a situation where he won't start as a rookie. Following this guy during his career has been a great experience. I hope our next road to glory is is just as good. Thanks, Kirk. We appreciate you bringing your insight to the entire Road to Glory series. It's been a pleasure following this young man throughout his career. His Road to Glory may have ended, but for someone else, it's just beginning. Thank you for joining us.